out. It's uh, configured differently. That is going to be doing filmmaking experiments um, during this cruise. But the yeah, having the having the two cameras that are in slightly different uh, that are looking at the feature from a different perspective. That's giving us a couple. Well, first, it is giving us some actual depth perception. So every time the they're synchronized, so we'll take a picture and we're getting two different views and that, you're right, that's giving us parallax, which will help with our um, the computer's depth perception. And it's also giving us different views of a different, um, especially, you know, the port is a low view that's kind of looking across, whereas cinema is looking down. And we what that's uh, doing is for- Pick it up to point three. He's at point two, right? I think it's for, uh, um, for each feature. You know, the nice thing is, is we're able to get around, a couple yeah. different edges right at the same okay. time. I can double check. Thank bridge, you. Bridge, can, you uh, can you confirm the vessel speed? Or the set speed? Yeah, because we do want to get across this flat area Perfect. Thank you, bridge. as quickly as we can. Roger. <clears throat> no offense to my colleagues who live in the prairies, but <laughs> for us here, I think these long flat... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're strung out. Look at this. Bits of sand are... are yeah, Atlanta hasn't Not started terribly. moving yet, so we're booking a... Yeah. What did, uh, does anyone remember uh, in the dive plan, it said the currents here are typically something east to something west, or you vice wanna versa? Hear. We want to see? Currents um, southwest, southwest to northeast. To northeast. Southwest to northeast, right. Now that's, that's kind of in a very, very broad yeah, but they were on the last cruise. They were very strong here, consistently. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. so that makes that makes sense. So uh, the the currents, no, it kind of sort of makes sense. We're just trying to figure out why Atlanta has got like a I don't know what is that 60, 70 meter layback. Okay, I, sorry. I, I, I remember you telling me that once before a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. I'm having. Having scary flashbacks, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and if it suddenly lurches again, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll have a deja deja vu experience. <laughs> deja vu all over again. I've uh, I've backed off there, right? So. I don't know what the PID loops were, but they were wackadoodle, so I've wackadoodled them back up, and it seems to be holding. It's, it's bouncy now, the altitude, but. We pass over this uh, apparently featureless uh, seafloor, but you can see very subtle structure, and I guess the little critters that live there, that that's, uh, those are features and those are homes. But I think we're looking for something, you see the, the small round things may, may be uh, home to burrowers and stuff like that. Yeah, and on uh, previous drives, uh, the Hurl uh, and the Okeanos Explorer uh, apparently saw some large coral, vertical walls, and small sharks. Yeah, well, well that's we're, we're working our way to uh, to the vertical walls. I think th those dives were on the other side of the seamount, so uh, that's one of the things that we're looking at is the contrast between this side and the other side. I'll pause for a minute. <laughs> Sorry for dragging you. You're just impatient today, Dan. <laughs> I'm always well, impatient. Well, I, I always like to keep Dan impatient because uh, <laughs> we don't want Dan to dawdle. Bridge, bridge nav, another four zero meters. Patience is not one of my virtues. Although, in your job, it's a very important 
trait, and, <laughs> and, I, and you certainly demonstrated it the other day when we uh, got hung up. I mean, you, you didn't rush into any action, but, but sat and really carefully thought through what to do, which was really uh, wonderful to see. Yeah. A little experience in that area, all of it bad. <laughs> so you had mentioned that the, that was that was about the ninth time uh, you'd been hung up with a oh, line or a. Oh no, the nine was uh, my record of pawn traps recovered with an ROV. Of, of unintentionally. Un oh, un unintentionally. <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, we were doing a survey in um, Strait of Georgia. And uh, half of it's on the Canadian side, half of it's on the U.S. side. And in the U.S., you're allowed uh, one prawn trap and one float. On um, the Canadians, don't have any of that kind of monkey business, so they can put several a string of uh, traps out with one float. And uh, kind of the way the uh, survey route went, we were crossing back and forth, so we we had been, you know hung up a few times and doing, we had a, a bunch of remediation steps to avoid getting entangled, of course. Uh, no, I'm gonna kick, kick her into gear here. Anyways, uh, I didn't realize it and had flown, uh, we knew we were flying next to one, but I had flown underneath uh, an arch so the rope floats between the prawn traps, so we flew under the arch perfectly with the vehicle and the tether management system, which is similar to Atlanta, only the tether is, can go in and out. And uh, once we realized we were hung up, we turned around and flew back through another arch. So we thought, you know, oh, uh, we <coughs> will fly further away, but fly back, or we tried to fly our same path, I, for I forget. Anyways, we got severely ra wrapped around the axle. And spent quite a bit of time trying to untangle ourselves and made it much worse <laughs> and it, 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 at the end of the day we had to recover the whole mess to deck and, and so you recover it with the traps and everything back to the deck yeah yeah we couldn't get back in the tms which mm -hmm. is you know kind of a issue if tms is a te uh, tether management system. tether management system yeah it's um, uh, a top hat system as opposed to a caged system so the ROV latches into the tether management system so for example if uh, Hercules could latch onto Atlanta and be launched as a single unit and then run down the depth and then once it's at depth it could unlatch and then fly away and uh, fly away with a tether though yeah and then there's a, a basically an underwater winch mm -hmm. thus tether management system and that you can pay in and out with your tether so, so this makes the launch and the recovery much simpler because it's a one-body system yeah. on launch and recovery. It, it also makes uh, the transit uh, through the water column much faster. We typically transit at a Could meter, you, you meter a second yeah, or two knots. So yeah. in the commercial world, uh, you know, ship time is money. So right. So, so most most of the commercial systems uh, have these uh, tether management systems. Correct. And, and yeah. I think the tethers are, are somewhat longer than what we're seeing here. Then. Uh, the standard nowadays is 800 meters. Yeah. We've got uh, a few systems out there that are 1,600 meters. Those are typically used on uh, pipeline vessels where they're trying to uh, get rid of the support vessels mm -hmm. or minimize the use of the support vessels with ROVs on them and have the capability of having an ROV on the lay vessel. Yeah, so, I mean, in our situation here, because the tether is short and we don't have a tether management system, we have to do a lot of movement of the ship itself to, to move Atlanta along. Um, and then when you have eight, 1,600 meters or 800 meters of uh, tether, the ship can basically stay still and probably most of your, the scope of your work is within the length of the tether. Is that, is that yeah, correct. The uh, typical construction vessel has two ROVs in the water at a time and uh, two crane wires going up and down. So all the ship moves are based on what we're doing with the cranes. And so the ROVs need the capability to, you know, move around and uh, do their work. And that sort of commercial work is supporting oil platforms, I assume is one large. Uh, um, yeah, that's kind of a common misconception. That is uh, significant, or that is a portion of uh, commercial work, but it's 
Uh, that's kind of an old school misconception. So well, I'm, an, I'm an old school kind of guy, so yeah. <laughs> set me straight. Uh, so back in the day, uh, in, in the 80s and 90s, um, on an oil platform, I'm doing quotation marks in the air, you had uh, what's called a jacket, which is the metal structure that goes down to the seabed in relatively shallow water. And then you had a uh, topside unit, which is the living quarters and the uh, drill, you know, the, ter the derrick and the mm -hmm. tower. So that's kind of the traditional oil rig that people think about. Um, in, the, in the late 90s, we started to uh, go deeper and deeper and uh, too deep to put a big metal structure several hundred meters to the seabed. So the, um, the platform, if you will, was uh, basically floating or a semi-submersible, right. and it was tethered with, it was basically anchored. So anchored, yeah, four, four point anchors. Or yeah, and um, as they went then deeper and deeper, uh, for example, in 2000, I'm gonna date myself here, I hate doing that. Uh, I think 02, uh, 03, somewhere in there, maybe 06, I can't remember. Um, we did one of the longest tiebacks at the time was uh, 52 miles, so the production wells were 52 miles away from the production rig. And there's an array of wells, you know, dozens, and they're all interconnected by jumpers and control hydraulics and electrical. And all that runs back to a production rig in somewhat shallower water, and then that's... Uh, then piped off to uh, an array of pipelines and eventually winds up in Texas. So a lot of the ROV support work is putting in and maintaining that infrastructure. So uh, most of the work is done from a big construction vessel, which is you know several hundred meters long and could, uh, for example, pick up Nautilus and put it on the back deck. <laughs> you know, 400 tons, uh, 400 ton crane is, you know, uh, kind of, that's the, maybe the larger ones, but an average one, I have a, you know, a two or 300 ton crane on the back and a, you know, 180, 200 ton crane up forward a little bit. And so, yeah, those boats travel all around and uh, put in all that kind of kind of inf infrastructure. So construction, that's kind of where the juice is. It's uh, a lot of fun, very challenging. You have all the same issues that we face on Nautilus, weather, and, uh, you know. But, but you say this th this is an old school view, and, and what's the what's the more recent use than commercial use of ROVs? But, sorry, what's that? Yeah, you, you were saying that, you know, the, the concept that most of the ROV use is... Uh, Oil patch is passe. What 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 do you see most of the use now? Uh, a lot of the a lot of my uh, uh, associates that were in the oil and gas industry are now doing the uh, offshore wind turbines. Wind farms. Yep. Yeah. So that's just how it is from a, from a mapping perspective. Yeah. Yeah. You can come up five meters. Yeah. You're good, Robert. We're just moseying along here, looking at mud. So. Yeah. Can you turn that one down a little, yeah. Chris? <laughs> Taylor Ann, I'm seeing these like um, kind of dark round things that look like kind of urchins, but I don't know what they are. Yeah, I think that from this distance, it looked like an anemone to me, but there's no hard surface for it to rest on unless there's like crumbles of rock it found, which is possible. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure kind of far. Yeah, here comes another one. Yeah, well, hopefully be yeah there's a couple more up there. I can uh, zoom around and do uh, zooms of opportunity there if you want. More flying, less talking on my part. Well, you're, you're, you're talking is fine. Yeah, an occasional, I, I, I wouldn't do anything but keep going. Um, yeah. Because I think we want to we want to get away from this uh, these sandy areas as soon as we can. But if a if a, a zoom into one of these little burrows or whatever Taylor Ann was talking about, um, 
won't stop you from moving forward. No, we we continue to move the vessel in Atalanta at a constant space, yeah. a, con a constant speed of uh, 10 meters a minute or mm -hmm. 0.3 of a knot. Yeah, and I was Four saying, meters. Uh, along with your indication that most of the ROV work is supporting uh, wind farms, certainly from my part of the world, the mapping world, when most of the offshore mapping was commercial offshore mapping was supporting oil and gas a few years ago, it is also now almost completely moved to supporting wind farm sites. Yeah. There's lots of activity off the east coast of the U.S., Block Island, um, they're looking at areas up uh, in the Gulf of Maine now, and most of the commercial mapping companies are, are really spending their time doing that. Yeah, so if you zoom into one of these uh, dark things, um, we'll, yeah, we'll, can do. we'll get Taylor to tell us what it is. If it's not just a rock. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting too if it was a rock. Along with the uh, mapping is also um, the geotechnical is, um, you know, you have to, if you're going to put a, uh, a structure like that on the seabed, you need to know the consistency, just like if you were building a bridge or a building. So if you're going to drive piles or do foundations. So they need to know what the consistency of the, not only the bathymetry, but the consistency. So they're. Uh, yeah, well, that, that you know that was true for the for the platform siding for oil rigs, and, and yeah. just as true for the for the yeah. turbines. There's a whole huge geotechnical uh, suite of measurements that have to be made before you can put that kind of infrastructure in. That technology has uh, gone from you know old school. They used to have a drill ship out there with a like a, a four inch string taking cores and uh, now they have that technology built in uh, using ROV technology and they lower the whole rig down to the seafloor and uh, take core samples one well, meter That's, that's always been such a such a challenge is with an ROV how you take a sample like that because uh, the ROV is usually quite neutrally buoyant. You need that okay, reaction video. weight to push can, something uh, in. Zoom in. Copy that. Yeah, the drill rigs that uh, Cellula and some other companies are building are... Whoa! Ooh, we have not there? seen that. They well, look that like uh, sponges, either. actually. Let me see what looks, that... Looks to me like a clam that's... What's that grass? The Mr. Grass heads? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The um, Chia is Pets. That, <laughs> <laughs> is that full zoom, is it? No, not yet. There we go. That's full. Roger. Wow. It's got a real like deep sea cottage core vibe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love to see it. Is it a is it a rock with stuff growing on it? I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's sponges. a rock that has stuff growing on it. Is oh no, some... look look underneath. It's yeah. got uh, little little feet. Little guys. Is that what's that little like almost translucent thing? No idea. It look it looks like it could be a polychaete or Poly like a worm. Oh, Cool. That's awesome. Still looking through the ID guide for this. Let's see. This is a good uh, thing we zoomed. A viewer says story time with Delta Dan is one of the top three reasons I always tune in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Ah. Only, uh, yeah, so it's rare I get to relax up here. It's uh, fairly benign and I can see out 100 meters in front of me and everything's moving at a constant speed, no monkey business. Huh. So, uh, and the winch is not moving, that's another one that uh, makes me nervous. So when we're going up the sea mounds, we have, um, you know, winch that winch custom. constantly moving and that's our, our lifeline, you know, back well, to that, Nautilus. That, so. That'll happen soon enough, Dan, so yeah. take, take advantage <laughs> of it now. <laughs> I am, thank you. Um, somebody's okay, asking I'm if it's an urchin. Going here. No, it's a rock with, I believe, sponges on it. Um, Am I good to zoom out? Like yes, please. Trying to find the exact species of sponge, but I'm not seeing it here in my guide. Um, but there are sponges like this that grow, like, in so, stick and that formations. Is a rock. It, it's, it's yeah. Rock. yeah. Yeah. Right, I got some good images of it to keep hunting. Okay. Good. I'm going to check out here for a minute to ask our. Uh, Alpha Geek Robert, Chief Electrical Engineer. Uh, what I'm doing wrong with the PID loop, so stand back. Oh. Yeah. Rage 
Anchorage now, 50125. I believe it's a type of demo sponge, but still not at the what species was that word? ID. Demo? Yes. Like demolition? Yeah, right here, yep. Demo Her demo sponge, sponge demo oh. demo. Robert is, uh, didn't answer my question, but he is very uh, involved with our winch controller at the moment and micro switches and potentiometers. I think he's identified it. Do, a do we still have somebody outside? Uh, we do indeed. Yeah, yeah. okay. Now you mentioned uh, the PID, Dan. Yeah. Can you explain what the PID is? Uh, yeah, they're. Their, control uh, theory with Dan. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. Um, well, I'm gonna generalize. <laughs> Poles and zeros. Poles and zeros. Yeah. The, uh, the, a comment just came up uh, on the chat here, and, I, and it's really, I, I think it's really neat comment. It says the deep sea is incredible. A room full of experts isn't sure if it's a rock, a clam, a worm, or sponges. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, ocean. And, and 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 they're so right. I mean, you know. There's so many mysteries, and uh, such a big area to explore, and, and each of us knows a little, but, but never enough. And so, uh, yep, the ocean always wins. We winching again? Robert, is, uh, he continues to amaze me. He just pulls these miracle fixes out of a hat. <laughs> He's an absolute magician when it comes to uh, all things electrical. He has come up here in the middle of a dive, in the middle of operation, opened up a stainless steel box with high voltage in it, adjusted a micro switch, and um, managed to get our winch working from the control van again. <laughs> <laughs> All while it's uh, energized without electrocuting him or uh, uh, Rye next to me or one myself. One hand behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're trained in the, in the, you know, how to work on high voltage without French frying ourselves or the electronics <coughs> that usually works out. Sometimes uh, we let the smoke out. I used to work as a steam fitter's apprentice in New York City. Oh, yeah. And uh, every once in a while, they, the electrical guys would come across uh, wires and oh, they just okay. didn't know if it was hot or not. And, you know, and you'd think they'd take out a voltmeter or something, but no, they just lick their two fingers <laughs> and put them across the two wires. <laughs> And go, yup, nope. Yeah. And they said, oh, he just goes one, in one finger and out the other. <laughs> I wasn't sure I believed that. But. I remember one of my earliest uh, memories with my grandfather uh, working on the old lawnmower on the acre in L.A. Um, to see if the spark plug was getting spark or not, uh, he would remove the wire and hold on to it and then give it a yank. And, uh, of course, you know, I had to, Grandpa was doing that, I had to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Spark plugs are pretty high voltage. That no must kidding. Have, you probably felt that. 50,000 volts yeah, coming I, out of the coil. Yeah, I, I, that I, was my first shocking experience. I yeah. had a near-death experience like that on the San Diego freeway, freeway once. I was riding a, a old Triumph 750. Oh, yeah. Nice, and, uh, nice was, machine. was running out of fuel, and there's a fuel valve to give you a, a little extra fuel, a little extra reserve tank, and I reached down to open that tank, I went about 45, 50 miles an hour <laughs> on the freeway, and I got a shock that almost threw me off the bike. It was, it, I, I was amazed I was able to, <laughs> and that was it. I just made sure I kept a full tank after that and never, t never went anywhere near there. <laughs> Uh, one time when I was a kid, so I used to um, take our, like, uh, you know, if we had household appliances or something that broke and, uh, you know, my parents got a replacement. So I'd take apart the old one. And this one day I wanted to learn about how motors and stuff work. So I took apart the, I think it was like a water pick or something. It had a little motor in it. And, um, you know, I wanted to see how everything moved and all the gears and everything. So I took the case off and I, you know, took it to, had to take the cord off to get everything apart. So I stripped the two wires on the cord, and I held it. And I plugged it into the wall, and I said, you know, all right, hold my Capri Sun. And I tapped it against the uh, against the terminals on the motor, and of course it just immediately blew up. And next thing I know, you know, I'm 
I'm lying on the floor, I'm looking at the ceiling. There's this like smell of burning in the air and you know. And you still became an electrical engineer. Yeah. <laughs> so I learned a little bit about uh, you should, there's a better way of uh, doing that. <laughs> the trick is to stand back. <laughs> and you, if you're gonna do something like that, you gotta, you gotta tap the far end of the cord, like hook it in and out of the outlet. Don't plug it into the outlet and tap wires against the thing. Also, kind of this is stupidity out of naivete. Yeah. Um, when I was a graduate student, uh, this was in the early, early 70s, um, we didn't have a TV in the house. And um, I started taking a TV repair course. And there's still days of tubes and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I saw an ad in the paper and it said, three TVs, $10. So I called up. And I said, do you have any of those $10 TVs left? And the guy said, no, 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 it's not $10 TVs. It's three TVs for $10. <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah, just come down. So I drove down. It was a, just a, a house in, in downtown San Diego. And this is a, somebody who had bought up businesses going out of business and just bought up all their inventory. And he had an entire house full of TVs. And in one room was probably 40 or 50 old black and white portable TVs and any three for ten dollars uh -huh. and I said can I try them out see if they're so you can for three for ten dollars you can't try it you take you get it so so I, I found <laughs> three that were very very similar and I figured between the three I should be able to make one one work and so I brought them home and opened up the first one and it didn't have much in it so that wasn't the second one I got it had sound and the other one but no picture the other one had a picture and no sound so I started kind of doing this transplant you know I'll take this part out of there this part out of there and I I was only in my first week of the TV repair course so I hadn't really learned much about things. <laughs> Hadn't learned how to ground the CR tube yet. Or, yep. CR tube yet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and and all of a sudden, a, a friend of mine, Bob Tice, who was, was an electrical engineer, came over and he saw me with the soldering. I said, "What the hell are you doing? Do you understand what this flyback transformer is? How much voltage there is?" <laughs> I said, "No, no, I had no idea." <laughs> and so I, you know, I could have killed myself. And it got me so nervous that when it came time, I thought I was all finished to turn it on. I put the TV way out on the lawn and ran a whole bunch of extension cords back to the house and plugged it in. Came on, it worked just fine. Awesome. Well, I shouldn't say just fine. It, it worked just fine except for the heart. The bottom of the picture always kind of folded up. So uh -huh. the, the, the real reason I wanted this TV was because this was the time of Farrah Fawcett Majors. Was, oh. <laughs> and, 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 and so I was able to finally watch Farrah Fawcett Majors, but her legs kind of wrapped up. Aww. <laughs> A six million dollar man. Yeah. I think we were both uh, learning how to ground the CRT tube without <laughs> getting electrocuted about the same time. Hi, there's a question I think for video. Why don't, why don't you? Yeah. Um, it says uh, about it's about the audio slate. Uh, last watch when the video did their audio slate at the start of the dive. The mark got stepped on by others uh, on the radio, and, and viewers weren't able to hear the mark. Does that affect anything in terms of video or data logging? Um, so that shouldn't really uh, affect the video or data logging. Um, yeah, no, that uh, we do the slate whether it's quiet in the van or not. It's just to, yeah, it's just a marker, really. Um, but that's a great question. Um, and then we got somebody from Orange County, California, tuning in. Hi, thanks for watching. And somebody's mes uh, messaged that they uh, test nine volt batteries on their tongue. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a a good pastime. You see on the seafloor here these ripples. Th these are all an indication that there's a current, a fairly steady current, um, and the, the grains are actually moved along. Um, and just like uh, the bottom of a riverbed, you'll, you'll form ripples the, as the current changes. If you look at the, uh, the uh, view from Atalanta, you can see behind her with that lighting because it's casting the shadows. You much, get a much better idea of these ripples. And for those people who study this kind of stuff, they can actually get an idea here. of how, flow, how fast the flow is. We have something for uh, both Larry and Taylor Ann here. Yeah, well, 
Sorry. Yeah, and a Ritagorja on a rock. And looks like we're seeing some more fragments as well in the sediment. So could those be kind of like what we collected last night, Larry? Yeah, poss possibly. Yeah, they, they look yeah, a little more fragmenty than there, most there, please. Of, uh, Free expiration avenue. Zoom in. Zero. Yes, please. Copy. We'll get the uh, Ritagorgia oh. and the... Uh, that's and the rock. Good. And oh, the rock. And a shrimp. Or two. <laughs> oh, yeah, and a little shrimp. Affirm. So is that the same... Uh, the, um, I've already forgotten the word you told me yesterday. Ca uh, started with a C. Calcium carbonate, but you had a different word. The nodules? Uh, no, what they're floating on. So the white, yeah, yeah. This is probably oh, the calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, yeah. It, 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 it's it's probably dominated by that. You know. We're not we're not so deep that we're we below the we be below this calcite compensation depth. The depth calcite, of which the, that was it. Uh, the depth at which the carbonate would dissolve. It's an interesting pattern that it. Uh, mix around the yeah and this is all the that pattern rock. is uh bob ballard was talking about that yesterday uh, you know when you have a flow the flow will be interrupted by anything that stands up proud in this case this little rock and so that will create shadow zones think about the the if you're in the wind you can get behind the building you'll have turbulence around the sides but you can you can be in quite a sheltered spot and, and so where, where we see nothing behind there that's being sheltered and uh, where you see the distribution of the little black stuff, that stuff's been moving around. And again, the ripples give you a, a sense that there's a general current flowing there. And it is flowing... Um, okay, yeah, uh, you can go in, please. The, the current is typically flowing orthogonal to the direction of the ripples. O only very, there are very few cases where the the ripple crests will be along the direction of flow. Usually the, they're at right angles to the direction of flow. And it's a little difficult from here to tell which way, but if we could see the symmetry of the ripple, they'll usually have a, a steep side and a shallower slide, side, and the steep side is usually the side that points upstream. So now if Chris was here with his ultra-sensitive Norbit system, he'd get, he'd get a profile of it, and we'd. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think even that would be a tough one for well, the Norbit. Well, you could pick that up and backscatter. That'd be the way to do it. You could pick it up, but you'd have some difficulty. I I, yeah. I, I actually uh, years ago off Ma Martha's Vineyard, uh, the, the the on our ripples experiment, we were yeah. actually able to measure one to three centimeter yeah. ripples. Yeah. Sorry, Larry, you're gonna jump in just a second. Yep, Speaking of Chris, do you wanna? Give this thing a bash? Yeah, sure. Please. But we... we oh, oh, we're going to actually... Chris is going to drive here. Whoa. Oh. Well, I thought when you give him a bash, I thought he was just going to get the ship to move ahead. But, whoa. Oh, this is a special occasion here. Uh, right, Chris? Chris Chris is an old pro. He's, uh, so you're uh, right now auto altitude... Auto altitude, auto heading only, so. Okay. Fill your boots. Auto heading, auto altitude. Oh, yeah. and then XY you're just doing? Yeah. All right. Once you get comfortable again, you can uh, take those autos off and fly, but do it, whatever you want. And hello uh, to our viewers from New Mexico. They mentioned that the ripples are in the sand are a means to determine the amount of water that flowed during glacial periods or glacial flooding. Yeah, the glacial uh, lake, lake Missoula, there was a, a lake that during the glacial times was blocked off by the ice and then it catastrophically fell. And the huge amount, because <sighs> billions of gallons of water rushed out all at once. And it created ripples too, but not this size. These are giant the gravel waves. Gravels were formed into into ripples. A little sea cucumber action there. And, and from and from Highlight. the size of the ripples, the spacing <laughs> of the ripples. Highlight. Highlight. Highlight for Jonathan. <laughs> I have uh, 
my headphones are more sensitive, so I yeah. have uh, SPL. I like that. Turn to right. the left oh, Jonathan, it, did you hear that? That was Jonathan, wasn't That's it? That's a five. That's, oh, I'm giving you a five if that's what you want. Yeah, that'll wake up, right. that'll wake up the whole OET. <laughs> Just say, huge kook. <laughs> um, Can we get a Zoom video? Yeah, that, copy. That's Jonathan's voice from down in the data lab, I assume. Yeah. Oh, God, or no, somewhere. I don't actually mean it. Don't back up the yeah, audio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we do not need a zoom on a great fan yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, oh, yes, it's all do. for you. All right. That's about that camera, really I cool. highlighted it, everything. Full wide. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, are we doing a bit right now? <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan loves his sea cucumbers. <laughs> I think it started as a bit. And yeah. then <laughs> I genuinely it's can't tell real, yeah. Yeah, it got so. I think it's a bit of an obsession. He probably should seek help. <gasps> I can't remember the name of the scientist, Larry, from UH. That uh, keep the ship moves in there, Dan. Uh, Roger. Uh, what were you doing? Four zeros. At what was the bearing? Sorry. It, says, it reads right down there. See Argus target bearing? Huh? Bo second from the bottom. Uh, one, three, zero? Yeah. Okay, you're seeing there's something Bridge coming control, up on the control, four zero at one, three, zero, line. please. And... That does correspond with... Oh, I see what you're talking about with that camera. Jonathan's camera. That's nice. All right, Roger. Thank you. And Kristen has joined us. Now yeah, I'm just taking over for uh, Taylor Ann for a few minutes. She'll be back to be uh, much more accurate with these IDs than I can be. <laughs> <laughs> so... But is, it, is everybody seen on Atalant? We're getting some uh, targets on the sector scan. Yeah, we are. So, and uh, so that, that's corresponding nicely to a local high on the, the low resolution bathymetry. 40 meters away. Yeah. It's 50 meters away. One of the scientists at UH, and I, I'm so horrible at names, I can't remember his name, uh, has studied the ripples around uh, the seamounts here for decades hmm. and he was explaining that he was uh, commenting about wave action and we were down here about this depth you know we're 2,000 meters or something like that 1,500 meters and it really uh, surprised me that uh, he you know wave in the same sentence as an ROV at 2,000 meters or 1,500 meters and he was saying that the wave uh, the wave action does propagate yep. down to these depths and he was real interested in the ripples. Every time we'd see the ripples, he'd have us stop and zoom in on them and get uh, perpendicular to them or parallel to them or both. Mm -hmm. And he could determine from the ripples whether it was current or wave action that had... Uh, yeah, and I can, I can guess at how he did that because if it was current action, they would be asymmetrical, like I described. Correct. But, uh, that the steeper side would be facing the current. If it's wave action induced, they tend to be much more symmetrical because the wave is oscillatory; it goes back and forth. Yeah. And so you'd expect it to be more more symmetrical. That's very neat. Yeah, I was involved in a study many years ago where, believe it or not, at 5,000 meters depth, there was evidence that when there was a storm on the surface, that there was wave energy propagated down even 5,000 meters. So it wow. was a real, real surprise to, to see that. And I think that's now um, much more acknowledged now. Yeah, I meant, I meant to look up his research, and I never, I never did. I need to chase that up, because I spent the whole expedition trying to second guess <laughs> whether it was uh, wave or, or current. current. Uh, and I, I never could quite get it. I, I was maybe like 50% of the time, but that's well, probably being optimistic. Larry, has anyone looked at the Tohoku earthquake, 2011, when the tsunami made, that wave was made by tsunami, did do the same to the bottom uh, coming out from that, that yeah, uh, so Pacific Ridge? Yeah, so uh, tsunami-induced wave, I think it really has it usually starts near the bottom. The, the displacement starts near the bottom, but it's a whole water a column that's lifted. And the actual wave on the surface is, is, is yeah, quite small. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I Copy think that. it's Sorry. not till it reaches shallow water that it really starts interacting with the bottom. But it, when it does reach shallow water, then there's tremendous impact. Okay, who's going to tell us what that is? <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> A sponge, it's a coral, and not. some rock. Yeah, that, that's oh, okay. it's, uh, it's <laughs> the, I'm not sure the scientific name, but I know that that's the glass sponge that we've seen a bunch of. And there, there's uh, quite a bit of little uh, critters that start with a Z growing on the coral. Some other critters on the sponge, associates, they say. Okay. There's so many species of zoanthids, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even try and. And there's a star start. fish of some sort. Mm -hmm. So the auto depth button activates auto altitude if that's the mode you're in, right? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Currently, it's yeah. auto altitude. Okay. Do you remember the double tap bug? So sometimes switching, depending on how you switch between auto depth and auto altitude, it will cause the thrusters to come on 100% the opposite way. Oh, neat. So for example, auto altitude will slam you into the seabed, auto depth will uh, bring you up underneath the ship. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, if you double tap, so it's kind of traditional for the Hercules operators, uh, the first time they sit down to double tap that function. And you can tell, um, you know, if you're watching, I always watch the thruster commands there just to make sure there's nothing wonky going on. Sure. Uh, one of the hundred things we're paying attention to up here. Um, yeah, it'll, it, it, it continues to get me probably yeah. at least once per expedition. I'll wind up in the mud when I don't intend to just because I press the wrong button. One of our viewers button. has identified that as a Walkyria sponge. Yeah. Yep, that's the name I couldn't remember. Watch your ship move there, Dan. Thank you. I'm a horrible navigator. Uh, you want to, yeah, same same bearing? Yeah. Bridge nav, another 40 at 130, please. Roger, Roger, thank you. So we're seeing something about 40, me 40 meters off in terms of... Uh, uh, yeah, it looks like we got a target 30, 40 meters away from Atalanta, so nothing uh, striking in uh, either sonar at the moment, so I think uh, maybe I'm not very good at reading these wonky bathymetry maps, but I'm assuming waypoint 2 is the top, yeah, and we're going to go back down. Yep. Right, yeah. Rennie has taken me through it I don't know how many times and I still I glance at them and I see a bunch of lines and a bunch of colors I just have a, like a mental blank there. Yeah. Which is so interesting because as a ROV pilot you, you clearly have such spatial awareness and, and sense of depth and, and perception and it says we're not doing something right in presenting the data then. I've always, I, I agree with you. I, I think these kind of contour displays are, are, are just not intuitive. I, that's why I always like to push for yeah. the kind of display that Chris is doing, a 3D display, because that's the way we, yeah. we interact with the world. And, uh, and I find having, it, having I you find say it, that uh, is really encouraging. To <laughs> I find it criminal we don't have the ROV and the uh, fighter mouse on all these maps. I could, that I could get into. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. <laughs> You should talk to management about that, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I spent many, many years looking at the 2D uh, uh, map that's here between Chris and I, and um, you know, that's kind of what I was raised with, black and white TV. One of the things that I'd like to see is depth shading relative to the vehicles. Depth, yeah. Right. Yeah. So reds below you and blues above you, or something like that. Yeah, something that's the same every time. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it well and it changes depending on the vehicle's altitude so you can see like what's at your eye level yeah, yeah. you know as a pilot that is you know you're doing your scans every couple seconds yeah that anything that takes your attention for more than a blink of an eye yeah can take your attention away from something else that you know you wind up uh usually with the rov it's not too catastrophic you wind up either in the mud or up against the rocks yeah no worries but it's been uh it was especially nerve-wracking in the beginning here when we had all the glass hanging off the porch it was yeah. That's okay. okay. I'm sorry. I'll leave it. I won't touch <laughs> no, it. No, it's okay. No, you, you keep it anywhere you want. No, that's all right. I'll, uh, yeah. My, my mouse was moving. Oh, that's okay. uh, it was like my computer was haunted. Okay. Just in time for... And then <laughs> Rachel figured out that it was Larry. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of sandy around here. A little bit. <laughs> Beautiful standoff view you got going on there of uh, Hercules, right? Say what? Yeah. Oh, Ryan's been. Uh, yeah. It's kind of perfect. Giving us a nice view of the solar. Yeah, I've been operating a lot just on that view. Yeah. Back in my RC airplane days, got to watch from the third person, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Ooh, there's a candelabra coral. Oh, there. yeah. Let's go look. Yeah, it's a bit nerve-wracking relying on a third party. When I come in for those uh, landing videos, I click the down lights on. Where are they? Uh, hotel. Uh. Lights. Yeah, that was awesome. Let's get a zoom video. Copy that. Oh. Whoa, wrong way. Oh, where are we going? It's fine. Mm -hmm. Totally tilt, fine. Tilt up a little. <laughs> you land and tilt up a little. You'll have a nice... Uh, All right. Let me... And just plunk it in the rocks there and then tilt up. Nice. We'll land. Can't focus. Come wide for a second. Yeah, copy. One of the nice things about the... All right, then the tilt is... Oh, yeah. The nice things about the cinema camera is you know how far it is away from you. So Yeah. we usually use bubble cam for that, but it's absolutely horrible because we're right, looking through a, a straw. Copy. Better. Oh, let's get this guy yeah. in focus here. And I'll tend to uh, if I, gotta I figure if out what convention you use for stick directions on everything. If I if I can, I'll tend to uh, only use the tilt on the HD, and then I'll wiggle my heading a little to yeah, get yeah, the yeah. thing centered up, because then I don't. Oh yeah, that definitely works better. Yeah, then I'm not. Uh, then I don't have to right, worry let's about. Go wide. Copy. 
if it's looking off at a wonky angle or not. If you change, uh, Ray, can you change uh, the starboard rail to the bucket? Now oh. there's starting to be some things. So that bucket cam up there, which is not the bucket cam, but it shows you where the Zeus is pointing, which is yeah. about all it's useful for. So you don't have to pan down till you're looking at something, then pan or tilt down till you're looking at something. Center up the camera, then tilt back up. Oh yeah, I gotcha. Bridge nav. Roger, ten starboard, and after that uh, we'll get another uh, forty one three zero. What do you got off to the off to the right there? You guys to where? Yeah. Off to the right. To the right. To the right, yeah, that guy. Oh, wow. I don't think Taylor Ann's back. Is that a firework or a bamboo? It is. Nice. I read a gorgia. I read a gorgia. Oh. If you hit uh, porch on uh, bubble cam for him, right, that would uh, also help Krista. Yeah, the view in the in the triclops is really cool. Uh, yes, please. On your uh, on your controller there. All right, let's get a zoom video. Copy. Oh yeah. A little shrimp action in the background. Oh wow. Beautiful view. Oh, it's right in the middle too. Right in there. I don't. I don't think you activated your window. All right, full wide. Copy. Oh, we have a really good question. Uh, hearing about the seat swap in the front row uh, between Jan and Chris uh, mm -hmm. makes me wonder what seat in the van would each of you want to try out for a watch shift? Ooh, that's a great question. If I knew as much as Taylor Ann, <laughs> I would totally, well, I, w I wish I had all of Taylor Ann's knowledge. I mean, w I don't know if that it works that way. I'm not sure because yeah. I think sometimes we You'll have, have to get going. A couple of scientists on watch. Yeah, but get up over these. I think it really. I haven't quite figured really out how high I need to be yet to get over stuff. Branch nav, hold position, please. All right. I think uh, that could be the top, or no? Yeah, it kind of looks like. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's around here. I don't know, I'm into seeing something, uh, how do you, can you measure with this thing? Yeah, it just click and drag. Those numbers appear somewhere too small to read. Uh, bottom left. How far is that? 80 meters. And we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a little hint of a target 80 meters on Atlanta, yep. so. Yep. Off to the right. We'll do a couple more ship moves that direction, and. Uh, yep. Uh, no, there's a yeah, there's an immediate one off to our right. Yep. At 60 meters, so. Maybe those are twin peaks. I don't okay. know. Well, it kind of looks from the contours that maybe there are, yeah. Yeah. So you want to. Boy, that was accurate bathymetry that was collected here. Yeah. Dealer's choice on what one you want to hit. If we keep going the same uh, general direction, you can probably uh, go right between the two peaks, or do you want to go right over the top of one? Well, I think the top would be better than between them. If we had the sonar going, I'd say <laughs> between them. I, I like think, this guy. I think Ale, I'd actually like to sit He's in your seat. He's got his priorities seat. straight. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think you would be really be, you would be really good as a science communication fellow. I think I would love to see the comments <laughs> and um, yeah, do all I that gotcha. cool stuff. You know, I, I would try out video. That would be cool. It is really Bridge fun. Bridge now, 40130. <laughs> Thank you. Oriole's always Hello. got some story for you, and <laughs> there he goes. Is that a uh, 
fossilized sponge in front of you. To yeah, there's like something that's kind of. So I always thought of a dead sponge as just a dead sponge. I never realized it was like a millions yeah. of years old dead sponge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fossil. It's a, I got an entirely new take on dead sponges. All right, let's go zoom. Copy that. <laughs> yeah. Go tighter. No, I think, I think that's not a dead sponge. It's just a. Just a rock. Just a rock. Yeah. It's a cool looking rock. Yeah. Imitating a dead right, sponge. So but just Copy. a rock. Yeah, Rachel, I think it's not going to get much better than this. Um, I don't know if he's... But whether it's worth it or not, I don't know, to, to take the time to do a, a run <laughs> oh around my God. this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, right. I'm ho I mean, you know, it's kind of, it, it's interesting looking, for sure. Um, but we got these two peaks, then we got kind of flat. Then we start climbing up a really oh, steep cliff. Oh, this is gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. People are people are saying it's really pretty. So maybe uh, there, there you see that. Look, look at that, Bob. Look at. So we're trying to determine if we should do some photogrammetry here. Ooh. Yeah, this is a really cool feature right here. Yeah. Kind of wish we had, I know Chris does, but I wish we had an orbit up and running. Yeah. Yeah, look at those ripples, you know, kind of in, in, indicating that downward flow. And uh, I don't know if you can pull back a sec. And I don't know if... Uh, can confirm this is a better view than the mud and yeah. the sand. <laughs> uh, I think, Ali, at some point I'd also like to I don't know about flying hark, but I'd love to try to fly Atalanta sometime. I I don't, yeah, I don't think I, I can manage the skills to, <laughs> to do that. Can I you think zoom you video? Could. Yeah, copy. Uh, do you want to zoom on the ripples? Yeah, zoom on the ripples. Copy that. Spin left. Roger. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a sea cuke? <laughs> cuke confirmed. All right, full wide video. Copy. Be interesting to be on the boat with Jonathan on, I feel like for, for April Fool's Day, what we should do is we should send Jonathan, a full 10-minute sea cucumber <laughs> compilation. Oh, full of highlights. Is that a, that's a shrimp? Not for April Fool's. Yeah. We should do that for Christmas. Or <laughs> yeah, you, he loves his sea cucumbers. Someone should get him a sea cucumber Halloween costume. <gasps> that would be amazing. Like a sea cuke, like full, like onesie. Actually, I would love to be a sea cucumber for Halloween. I feel like it would just be a gigantic sleeping bag. That you totally could use a sleeping bag to make one. That would that's genius. Oh my gosh. I wonder like does Amazon have sea cucumber? Is Amazon <laughs> hip to the deep sea? Can we um, uh, can we bring it back in focus back there back row? Copy. Yes, yeah. please. Yep. Yeah. ROV dive not a Halloween party. So it looks like the peak may be more over this way. I don't know if we should step Atalanta over here or if you want to just keep going towards the waypoint. Uh, we can do a step that way. I think Rachel, Rachel's gone to ask Jonathan whether he wants to do a spin around survey on this one. And so 
let's All right, let's, so maybe let's just do let it settle for a second. Yeah, All let, right. let, let's do that and uh, see if we get the answer to that. And Four meters left in the ship move, but I can I can step that way a little bit yeah. while we're waiting. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Big movement there. Yeah, just a just a big wave there. You're all right. You're 16 meters up. It's because we're stretched out. It, oh, I, it I wasn't worried there. about Herker out of land. I was worried about me up here. That's uh, one six. What is that? Oh wait, I should be able to see that. Never mind. I can work it out myself. Bridge now two zero one six zero. Roger. I suspect you're not yet at the top of this. Yet. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna step 20 meters towards Chris there. And, uh, see if we can get Atalanta a little bit closer to Hercules on the wall. Someone wrote in that kind of seems like a Halloween party because Dan is dressed as a navigator. Ha <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> The sonar is working fine, Dr. Ballard. However, our Ethernet bottle has suffered some uh, H2O ingress. So we had a, just to be fair to Chris, yeah, Norbit, Norbit's all good. Uh, one of the penetrators on the Ethernet bottle is uh, weeping just a few uh, drops of seawater in, and Robert uh, very wisely uh recovered the deck and we removed the uh, ethernet bottle and indeed there is a ground fault in it due to uh, seawater and, and intrusion but do you know the source of the intrusion yeah uh yeah one of the one of the old he penetrators did. in it uh, okay the ocean yeah the ocean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks that's, that's helpful. so which way are you stepping there dan um step I'm stepping uh, 160. 160, okay. Because, Chris, I, I think we want to... What was that, Larry? Uh, no, I think we want to head more to the peak if we can. Yeah. Well, Chris is... Are we waiting uh, on Jonathan? Sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Dr. Ballard online here. Bob, can't hear, can't hear, can't hear you, Bob. Yep. Put it the ship to go. catch up. Yep. We're out of tether. Oh, you guys worry about the picky, tether. picky. Come on, I know, I know. Come on. <laughs> it's so not. A, it's not an Bob, AUV one of these yet. Days, I'm, I'm going to get you one of these tetherless systems. Yeah, Bob. right. It's not an AUV yet. Because uh, we've changed our uh, Atlanta bearing, as I was mentioning yesterday, Atlanta can sometimes be a little naughty compared to Ar uh, Argus because it just doesn't have the mass. So it takes longer to uh, pendulum to a new uh, to a new bearing. And why are we not using Argus? Uh, that is above my pay grade, sir. <laughs> You'll have to talk to the ROV manager about okay. the decisions uh, on what vehicle goes where and just uh, just the bus driver. Look at that upper left on our, on that Atlanta camera. Some something hanging uh, down. Do you, uh, I don't think it's that steep, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna step you another twenty. Is that, okay. a, is that yeah. a strap? What's that on the upper left? Upper left. Coming in and out of Argus or at Atlanta. That Th one. That's a reflection on the dome from oh, okay. the tether. The oh, okay. uh, the, the, we have all the lights kind of. Yeah, uh, okay. that scared me a couple times too. Yeah, scared me repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> Every watch. Oh, it, it can never be a. A rope or a line, you know. So. <laughs> I mean, it definitely seems like this is the peak, right? Like. Yeah, I would say so. Not quite where the map said, but. Well, look at your sonar. Bridge. Yeah. Your sonar says Bridge. You got nav. Two yeah. zero one zero. Right. That, that, that's what I'm looking at. You got another twenty meters on your sonar. Yeah. Or whatever those increments are. There, uh, Larry, we have a viewer asking you can explain again about current versus wave. Yeah, so what, what, when we see these ripples on the seafloor, did you uh, copy that? Or they yep. can be induced by steady currents. 
and when they're induced by a steady current. Okay. I'm, no, I'm just you, I'm trying to get the idea. Uh, sorry, which can we get 20190, please? Which direction the current is going by the asymmetry of the ripple. That one side will be steep and one side will be shallow. And it's usually the steep side that's going everywhere. Pointing can you center that up into a the bit direction in of the current. The oh, so the yeah. wave induced ripple, because waves move back and forth in a, a very symmetric fashion, they won't be asymmetric. They'll be the same, same steepness on either side. So that's how you tell the difference between a, a wave induced ripple and a current now induced ripple. Looks like it's more uh, wave -induced south. Ripple we could go due south if you wanted. That would, that would south work south as south well. Are we going to And the current induced what? one is asymmetric with the steep side facing upstream. Basically. Yeah, 20 meters south. Yeah, we're trying to summit. Uh, the ship's struggling to. Uh, yeah, we've been fighting this current all day. Did you pay the bill or what? No. Uh, Do you pay the bill? I always <laughs> pay the bill. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. Sometimes twice. Sometimes. <laughs> well, if asked. <laughs> I have to be asked. We are uh, bucking a bit of a current too, so Atlanta's slow to move. So we got to move 40 meters with the ship to get 20 on Atlanta in that direction. That's a pretty red thing there. And then it randomly settles out at some point. Stomped later crinoid, or uh, yeah. a common name is sea lily. A sea lily. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just kind of hanging now. Yeah, that's fine. You can come. You can come down. So as long as you got the altitude, when when we're in this situation, I'm I'm definitely at par. I get as much as much possible as I can. So you're you're horizontal. And then if I get tired of waiting, we go tail to tail, and I drag Atalanta unceremoniously towards the rocks. So it's interesting that with all this outcrop and with a clearly fast and steady current, there isn't more life on the rocks. Isn't what? Isn't more, there aren't more coral, crinoids, things like that. Well, why do you get to the summit? Well, well, the, w w it depends on which summit. We're at, a, we're at a local summit here. There's a black uh, coral there. Still got it ahead of us. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna start climbing a very steep cliff and then get yeah. up to the, to the big summit, yeah. It'll be up there. Well, this may still be too sheltered, although there's clearly yeah. feeling a current here, and and we see the ripples on the seafloor. So that if you uh, if you can you come to the east at all, Chris? Is there yeah. still some of that way? Yeah. Uh, somewhat. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's where I think I think you want to come more east. All right. Your other right. Oh, we want to. You want to go? If we yeah. go this way, it'll. Uh, give us more uh, leash but oh that's not uphill never mind yeah no, that's kind of what I'm to the right yeah so yeah may, you may have to just step us that way I can maybe like a two two five step or something yeah right. great mind sink a lake I'm coming up with that same number bridge nav Two zero two two five, please. Roger. This is where it would be nice to tether out. <laughs> when I first started operating this system, I kept hitting the floor like this for the tether out button. That would probably get us in a lot of trouble. Maybe we need rudder pedals for yaw. Then you can have an extra hand for buttons and uh. Yeah. I'm used to um, the BG systems joysticks. Both the Perry and the Schilling vehicles have all the flight controls on one. So your verticals are with your thumb. Sure. And you can also uh, select and deselect the auto modes and right. uh, one of three pan and tilts on the vehicle, all yeah. with your right hand. Nice. Yeah. 
Do you be able to do a quick zoom on that long, skinny thing yeah. right in the middle of the hole there? The dead coral, the yeah. dead sponge. Just want to see if that's what it is. Possibly the million-year-old uh, fossil. You can see it's uh, hole fast to the upper left. Up to upper left, yeah. Getting a little yanked here. So it's a little hard to hold. Uh, let's come get a zoom video. Come Maybe down another uh, three meters there, right? Come if right look, down to look zero at, look delta. At the tr uh, track lapse view, you see a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three at least falling over. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Dead coral or dead sponge. Dead sponge, yeah. Covered so, sort of old, too. Can you judge their age by how much? Uh, how much sediment and how much o uh, manganese oxide? Yeah, so it's like millimeters per million years yeah, or something like that? Yeah, that's, I wanted to just start collecting a bunch of them and do exactly that. I think we're going to try to grab one before we come up. I'd yeah. like a prettier one. We'll yeah. get one on the yeah. summit. Yeah. We when get we get to the top. Yeah, when we, yeah. If and when we get to the summit. So do you, you judge their age by the thickness right, of the... wide video. Well, I mean, you, there's different ways of age dating it, but... It's all relative. For me, it's the ones we brought up on Chautauqua, Chautauqua were almost yeah. black with manganese oxide. Mm -hmm. And how old were those? Tens of millions. Wow. There's another one down to the lower right. See it? You yeah. can uh, yeah, tilt, so three you of them there. Yeah. tilt your camera down a bit, yeah. Chris. You're and looking like yeah. There's one, yeah. Here's lower bottom middle another one bridge nav another two zero two two five please all right Oops. this guy's got a little scar on his back All right, let's start coming in video. Dan, can you zo zoom out on the uh, Hypex survey? Uh, I could if I knew how. The thing just is scroll out. Scroll, I think, I think the wheel, if you just use the wheel. Yeah, the other way, yeah. It's so responsive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> how far do you want to scroll out? Right. That's good, that's good. Yeah, I just, I just want to make sure we don't end up too far south because you want to keep heading, heading to the yeah we, right, let's come wide video. we've moved the boat like three times and uh yeah atlanta has moved uh i don't know i've moved the boat 60 meters and i've got atlanta yeah, yeah it's i just want to make sure we keep moving east yeah so summit's up. dead ahead yeah. yeah we've come about uh seven zero meters south oh and look at that look at that it it uh Hypac says we're we're close to the summit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sonar even agrees. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And looking out at the bottom even agrees. You'd almost so agree there too. Yeah. yeah, looks like a duck walks like it's probably uphill. But then after that it's gonna go downhill. Yeah, or you wanna get some corals up here. Well, we, we've got a we've got a, a much much higher peak that we'll climb later. But if you want to grab them now, we can grab them now. Well, you can always throw right. it away and pick up another one, right? Yeah. Look at that bluish. Yeah, you want to sort of pedal harder. Eleven meters to go on the move, halfway through it. Yeah. Yeah, the ship is... Well, that was from his heading change. It looks weird, because the track is from the center line of the ship. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah I wish the point showed at the wire, because that would be more accurate to what we actually care about. Yeah, it would. It's... There it is up it's there. Still going up. Yeah. I would expect the coral and sponge population to pick up. So. 
might want to do more of an west move. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, right where you're pointed is uphill. Uh, let's do 20245. Sorry, I didn't copy the last. Uh, you can do point three. No, he can't because of the because he's going sideways. That's what he's telling. Oh me. yeah, yeah. No, sorry. Whatever speed you can make, Oreo. Point two is <laughs> fine. Point two. I'm sorry. Yeah, moving sideways is hard. <laughs> if I was sleeping, I would appreciate it because you'd be waking me up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear him grumble at you? We're getting sass from the bridge. <laughs> Oreo, Oreo, and I are uh, neighbors uh, on either side of the bow thruster. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It is nice actually. I can tell exactly what the ship is doing while yeah. I'm sleeping, or not sleeping. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say we're about almost there and nothing. That's why I want to get to the big peak. Well. Yeah, Larry. Larry's itching to move, uh, not south. <laughs> it's funny how the peak is so far off from the map. No, it's, I guess it's you're pretty, pretty close. No, it's it's not where the ship is. That's it. Yeah, it's not, so, it's not very far from where Herc is. Copy that. Um, keep yeah, it, we'll like keep an eye on the ship here. Oreo's uh, struggling yeah. with the... Uh, did you, you copied that, did you? Yeah, DP's yeah. having trouble, Raj. Uh, we're just uh, resetting we're the gonna, jet pump. Yeah, just stretch we, it we out for a second. We may bail. Just gonna end blast up. up and on the the, uh, All right. We want to get to the cliff. I think it's not something to write home to mom about. Yeah, I don't think so either. Exactly. You're going to make her eye cry when you drag her around, but... Sometimes that's how it is. Yeah. Sometimes you drag Herc, sometimes Herc drags you. So you just got to watch so there, uh, there, which there's, way it there's the peak. I think right there now turns now. Atalanta <laughs> uh, because it'll put a turn in our tether. There's some over there dead ahead, but not much. Just to the right. To the right? Yeah, just. Yeah, you're still, you're still lighting up stuff in your sonar 20 meters away. Yeah. I'm ready to bail if you yeah, guys so are I've ready. Yes, I've been to ready bail. for some time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, we're bailing. Bail. We right, gotta yeah. wait for the DP to come back up now before we do anything. All right, I'm gonna start getting lined up to head. Uh, yeah, you looks like east. east. Yeah. Turn east. and burn east. to the east. Yep. East. Go down in this, in the saddle, Larry. Yeah. Well, do we go down to come up again? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. So we'll head due east. So Ray, you'll have to come up as Chris. Uh, hopefully, comes to the north of you there. And do you want me to go north of her? I I would. Yeah. Okay. Well, you might not. You might get to the uh, waypoint faster than anticipated. So we're. We're live boating at point three now, so we'll see if he gets it under control here. Oh, I see. So we get if we do need to drag, we're in the proper orientation. Is that the? Uh, no, I'm. If you're closer to Atlanta, though. Raja, if you want to hold position there and take a breath, uh, we're just gonna get the ROVs situated for a move uh, east. Say what? Uh, not yet. Let us uh, get our ducks in a row down here, Oreo. But yeah, our next this, uh, the bottom down. So our next uh, waypoint is uh, okay. quite a ways to the yeah. east. Can I see down more? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be going east for two, three hundred meters, something like that. That's as far as I can see out. Yeah, if you back out for a second, we get a, let's get a, a measurement of how far it is to the base of the cliff. We got a couple of questions coming in. Uh, what would knock over the sponges or corals? They die. And, uh, you know, just attrition. 
Uh, sometimes you can actually see where they left their hole fast, a little circle on the rocks. And then another question is asking, uh, what are the conditions that made you all predict there would be life at this summit? And what are the hypotheses on can, why uh, there isn't actually around. much life? <laughs> you can yeah, spin well, we, around we now. Suspected. Well, coral and sponges have... What's that? Yeah. ...cannot chase their food. It has to come to them. So by getting up <laughs> on the summit, the underwater wind is bringing more nutrients to them. So you tend to find good high populations of of sessile animals, animals that are attached to the rocks will be up where the current is bringing in their food. They're not eating anything locally. In fact, if you look at the terrain okay, we'll, here, it's almost... We'll stay a little closer to Atlanta very little light. in this case, Chris. Okay. Closer to, like, upon, under it, because... So since we're going downhill, the bottom, yep. if you're too far out, she'll be dragging her tail going down the hill. I got you. Yeah, yeah. vertical tether. And yeah, yeah, if you just hold out there, I'll get the ship outside. moving. Which sort yeah, of more vertical the tether. Niches for little guys. So you, you'll notice there's hardly any life here. Uh, we're going to wind up going east. These seamounts are about a bridge. Old nav, age, two uh, years let's old. do 4 0 due east, please. What are these guys still around? These are I 4 yeah. clade bamboo yeah, corals. Um, they come in these candelabra like shapes but they are not always in that same exact shape. Uh, but yeah, they're still, you know, I, I think getting genetic so studies done on these. The thing, that, the thing that I'd like to see here, instead of tether wraps, have like a spring coil that wraps up on this thing, makes it yeah. very obvious which way you need to, it's, which yeah. way you need to go to unwind. It's anything but obvious. Yeah. There's a dead coral right there. It hasn't fallen over yet. One lower center screen. I mean sponge, not coral. See, how do you pan this guy again, Chris? Oh, you gotta select the pan tool. Uh, yeah, that one. That the one. magnifying glass, obviously. All right, let's get and down. Then don't and, try, and then don't try to measure distances again until you uh, until you select the arrow. So if you give me a distance of waypoint six. That would be helpful. Copy that. Uh, we have a couple minutes to look around here. If we find anything interesting, do some zooms of opportunity. Uh, Bridges is getting uh, the vessel. Yeah, drop down. Look at those dead ones right in front. You want to look at the dead ones? Okay. Yeah, what the heck. Um, I'm into that. You can come around and look uphill too if that makes it easier, which it usually does. Yeah, one right below you. Yep. You can uh, blast the disruptors known as the down lights. Something growing on it. Down. All right, let's get a zoom. What are those guys living on there? Those little brittle stars? Or? No, they're like crinoids. They're crinoids, crinoids yeah. Crinoids. yeah. There is one brittle star yeah, at the top. The little guy on top. Is yeah. Star, yeah. Fun to watch him jump and swim away. Yeah. <laughs> What I usually do when I land, Chris, is um, yeah. So I have uh, some down on and a little forward if yeah. I can. Yeah. And uh, so I'm usually creeping forward slowly as I come to land. Sure. And then, then I hit stick lock, and that locks in the down and the forward. And yeah. Th then I hit auto heading. If you hit auto heading first, um, one thruster can be reversed, and that'll blow out the scene. Ah, uh, right. So it's it's okay to have auto heading on if they're both thrusting back. Do we have a ship move in? Uh, negative. Right now we are rebooting uh, the bow thruster. Okay. So we've just All rebooted right. the jet pump. Let's come wide video. And uh, All right. The bridge needs a few minutes to. Uh, Make sure all, all their systems are back online and All right. 
right. And then if you can drop down while, to the while left. We're wait, while we're waiting. Down to the can, left? Uh, yeah. Roger. Give me a measurement to a waypoint six. A measurement to waypoint six. Roughly okay. uh, one yeah, kilometer. That's about oh, all we got. A one hour ride. Yeah, I can't uh, come down there anymore because okay. of my back end. All right, one hour is fine. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we got to keep going. Though. We don't, as soon as you can. All right, I, pivot I, I, right. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know we're waiting for the... Waiting on the ship now. They're um, yep. trying to get the DP system to uh, as being a little right. naughty for the moment. So you can see uphill. If you can't go down, bring the hell to you. Keep coming. Got to let me scoot sideways a bit. Yeah. You'll have to. Uh, I got to back up. No, uh, you just come up, Chris. Come yeah. up and then uh, turn towards the hill. Okay. And uh, come up towards Atalanta there. Atalanta is dangerously uh, low up above you. So let's come up underneath Atalanta. If the ship uh, goes drifting off in that direction, we could I be in you. a little trouble. I hear you. So if we're under Atalanta and the ship takes a uh, a runner, which it's cruising along now pretty rapidly to the north, point yeah. seven. Yeah, yeah. Let's come right under, and you can come up too, please. Yeah. yeah. We're making a point six knot. At the moment, so. Okay, yeah, that, we're going to feel that. You're going to feel that. direction? To the north. Okay. We're live boating to the north. There uh, you go. Unintentionally. I'll go with the flow. Can I close this window here so I can see the yep. deltas? Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you get down a little? Uh, you want to trade back, Chris? Yeah. I, I should probably jump in there. With, uh, sure thing. going to take off to the north here pretty possibly pretty rapidly ship's still moving north it looks like he's getting it getting a handle on it but we were up to uh, close to one knot there so that's that's coming our way we got a viewer complimenting your driving chris well thank you <laughs> it's one of your best friends i think <laughs> yeah, I have them planted in the <laughs> audience, <laughs> ready for... <laughs> and there's another viewer okay, saying they'd love, that, uh, they'd love a, to see a manganese-encrusted sponge. Beg your pardon? Um, that they'd love to see a, a dead sponge that was encrusted with manganese. Bring your head. Yeah, it was uh, almost completely black. For me? Yeah, we're moving north. Atlanta's starting to swing north pretty rapidly now, so I'm going to come to the north as well. And I'm going to ignore that turn in the tether for now. Hmm. Uh, you get a chance there, Chris. Can you reset the DVL, please? I can. Reset. Yeah. Okay, Out. you can uh, come down five meters for me. lost track quickly there, didn't it? Yeah. That's why I like to keep an eye on the vessel, because it... Yeah. Uh, looks like he's got it under control, but Atlanta's going to... Yeah, he's going to want to take some time to get the ship reoriented in the weather and stuff. Yeah. Meanwhile, we'll go on a what I call a nautilus holiday, some of the most fascinating things I've found have been uh, chasing the ship around. 
one of the better ones uh, during an ONC job. Uh, we kept asking, scientists kept asking to go look at, uh, I think it was El Guapo or something. It was uh, quite a ways off to the south. And uh, the engineers were like, no, no, can't do that. It's the engineering crews, they have priorities, blah, blah, blah. And we were... Okay, take a breath there, Aria. We're, uh, take, do what you need to do. Yeah. Or we'll, we'll stand by here, okay. have him hold position uh, until Atlanta stops swinging. Okay, we're going to hold position and let the vehicles get straightened out for a little bit, Oriel. Some bow pressure problem. Yeah. Roger. <laughs> he sounds like he was stressing up there Roger. a little bit. Thanks, TJ. Uh, anyways, yeah, we... Yes, please. You can come down 10. When we push the weather envelope and then try and move the ship sideways, um, it will cause the, D the DP system to uh, basically to vomit. And uh, we'll have to, uh, the DP system will go offline because it, it gets in an error state and they have to reset. Yeah. Anyways, we uh, wound up going directly at one knot over El Guapo. <laughs> and uh, we managed to fly through the black smoke plume and then they finally got control of Nautilus, and so we had to move all the way back. So we went back through it in a little bit more controlled fashion, but of course the engineers were, you know, back as fast as possible. And we took uh, two Niskins on the way through the smoke cloud and got a quick, couple quick views right at the very to top of El Guapo, of the black smokers. Scientists were ecstatic. And they ask you to do it again, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wanted to do it again. Let's give a slip a hundred dollar bill to the uh, bridge operator and have him step out for coffee and just turn the DP off. Put another layer of clothing. How do you sit there with a t shirt? Don't you get you like cold? This particular spot right here is uh in between two of the uh the big blasters. The blasters, yeah. In theory, in theory, Chris, that is uh, Atalanta where it should be. I think we had a bit of a more of a layback to the north, if I recall. But yep. if you want to uh, start heading down the hill here, I'm ready. Okay, yeah, we'll let, there's a heading change in. We'll let that finish and then, rather. And then keep going. No we have a, a copyright question from an artist. Uh, I was wondering if I use footage from the streams as reference to draw or paint, can I sell the work created from that reference? Sell? No. I'm going to use this opportunity to take the turn out of my tether so you guys are going to get dizzy and it's going to be dusty. Public domain. Paid for by the taxpayers. Available to anyone. Now. Was that, what was that, third time you've sat here, Chris? Um, I think it was more than that. More than that. Yeah, over the years, yeah. Sorry about the uh, all the excitement there. It's well, it's You part handled of it very well. Part of the fun. Yeah. <laughs> he remembers every one of them. Controlled chaos. Oriel's going to rotate the ship a little bit to ease the load on the thrusters. Roger. And then we're going to start going. 
We are going to go east, yeah. We can just, Where'd yeah, you, you can keep looking east and I'll, I'm going to stay pretty close under you as we start moving here. You can come down uh, five meters for me, please. is going to be not favorable current. Is the current coming from the southwest? Is that, is that your uh, impression? I don't know. Let me sit down here and we'll see which way it's blowing. So I'm facing, uh, what am I facing? West? Yep. So the current is moving southwest to northeast. That way, mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that what we said it was supposed to be? Yeah. Yep. You uh, zoom in on the Bathy Pass these while we're waiting. I dusted it because the current's behind me. So. Yeah, it gave us something to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feeding my black coral. Okay, that's. Not very nice view. Not Take sure what it had in mind. Someone's asking how far can Hercules go? As far as the ship will take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ship. Hercules has um, a 30 meter tether attached to Atalanta. Uh, but, but Atalanta is usually 20 meters above us, so our effective uh, range from Atalanta is about 20 meters without um, to keep a nice a loose tether. Look at that guy. Uh, other than that, we have to move the ship which then moves Atalanta dangling on a wire thousands of meters below That's the ship. That's one of your eel-like uh, guys. It is. Come down. Uh, oh, no, you can't come down. Went backwards. Don't you love that? He's got a reverse. He's got quite a reverse. They're sensitive to, I think it's our, maybe our... Pressure wake? Your pre pressure wake? Our pressure wave, you think it's from the vehicle? It could also be... Electro oh, you're pretty noisy. Electromagnetic current, too. Yeah. Uh, Whatever it is, it it makes them irritated, and they shake their head and open their mouth. And, okay, I need to be going the other way here. What am I doing? Putting turns on my tether again. <laughs> Completely lost following the eel. I've also made a giant dust cloud. Too. Yeah, I'll turn off the light. You can't see it. We're meant to be going east. Yes, go east, young man. Go east. Get down in the saddle area. So yeah, Hercules is typically about 20 meters in front of Atalanta, which I use these little black boxes here to keep track of optimally. And uh, when we're on the move like this, we're moving at 10 meters a minute. So uh, if we stop to look at something or have a sample while the ship is moving and Atlanta continues to move, I have about two minutes before I'm getting run over by Atlanta. And we can and do let Atlanta go 20 meters ahead of Hercules, but uh, that can be uh, in some situations hazardous to the vehicle health and we have to then make up that time. And two out of three times, we'll find something that the scientists, the scientists will find something that they want us to look at closely in that time we're trying to make up the speed. And yeah, we get kind of behind the curve. So we try and stay under or ahead of Atalanta.
Sure, yeah. Uh, no, you're good. I need to uh, be under you more, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna zoom around while I'm waiting for you to catch us. But Chris is uh, constantly moving. Bridge, bridge now, four zero zero nine zero. Nice job getting her back under control, Ariel. Okay, so we're, the ship's all set, you think? That's cool. That is very pretty. Yeah, look at that little cluster. Is this something that we would have time to make a quick model of? Yeah, but I don't know if I have enough uh, tether to get all the way around it. Okay. Uh, Let's try one quick circle. Yep. As far as you can go. Oh, yeah. Spin it. Awesome. Spinning it, baby. Spinning it. Spin it like a 45. You're doing great. <laughs> All the way in the back. What do we got there, Taylor Ann? Bathy Pathies. Yeah, yeah, Bathy Pathies, black coral next to a really tall Walteria sponge. We've got some primnoid fans. Uh, I can't tell if that's a sponge or a zoanthids covering something. The little yellow one back yeah. there. Yeah. That um, is very pretty. And then what are the, uh, the candle? I think you see set up in an aquarium. The, yeah, the really yeah. tall fuzzy ones are, are sponges, Walteria, and then an artist display in we have some frayed sponges, too. Those uh, are the kind of white uh, ones with the little... Uh, like the roughly looking one? Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the coral fans are primnoids. It's Bonk. a popular spot. Yeah. <laughs> I need a soundboard here just for when things happen. When you turn the lasers on, when I you bonk something, I like there we could have all kinds of fun. <laughs> I saw it coming. I was going to try and get above it. I'll, I'll back yeah, off yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see it coming. I was worried about wiping out the bamboo coral there. But when I saw it coming, it was too late. <laughs> 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 I can't stop 5,000 pounds of bar V that fast. The bamboo car is still good, though. You can see it just coming into the view on the right side. That's the rock I just hit. The photogrammetry is coming from the starboard camera, correct? That and the cinema camera? Yeah. That's looking nice. Oh, we got a student from Memorial. It's actually watching. on port in cinema. Sorry about that. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Hi, Anika. What? We got a kid uh, from my school watching. Gonna uh, come back around here to this angle before I hit the rock, and we'll fly directly over it, and then be on our way. We got a viewer asking if spinning her messes with the tether. Like, uh, will it get twisted, <laughs> or is that not a problem? <laughs> yeah, it's that's a big idea. problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we typically, when we come up to something, we do um, 180 degrees one way, 
that puts half a turn in our tether and then then we can then do a 360 so we come back to zero and then back around to 180 degrees the other way if we put a turn in the tether uh, we get the 1985 phone cord effect those remember the old uh, princess phone that hung on the wall with the long cord <laughs> <laughs> And that causes the lights to go out here in the control room. And a lot of work when we get back on deck. Yeah. Okay, off we go. East. All right. Well done, thank you. My pleasure. All right. This is some uh, some crazy tether that uh, Rich, we if you use. want, you can cancel this move and put in another uh, 40 due east. Our tether has a uh, fiber optic conductor in the middle of a high voltage conductor. So there's three wires in the tether and they each take uh, 2600 volts or 2.4 kilovolts. And inside that, buried in the middle is a fiber optic. Uh, I don't know what you call fiber optic cable. A fiber. and. Uh, that's where all of our telemetry and video and control goes. How many fibers are there? There are three uh, between Hercules and uh, Atlanta, and there are four in the 6-8, which is the umbilical that goes from Atlanta to the ship to the, onto the winch, 7,280 meters of it. But there are only currently three in our slip ring. Well, we have a brand new one in the box with another fiber pass that we're planning to put in uh, hopefully a, a this new winter. A new slip ring. Yeah, a new slip ring. We've got another student from my school watching. Hi, Avon and Taylor and your mom's watching too. She messaged in. Hi, mom. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> watching. I'm glad that you're enjoying. I know you love watching, uh, especially when I'm on. <laughs> Well, we'll all, we'll all say hi to Taylor Ann's mom. Yeah, <laughs> hi Taylor Ann's mom. She's doing hi, a Taylor great Ann's job. Mom. You should be very proud of her. <laughs> yes. Aw. Without Taylor Ann aboard, it would be complete chaos when the RV comes aboard. <laughs> we wouldn't know what anything was. <laughs> I'm sure you guys would figure it out. Oh, no. <laughs> you should see her. She has to get after him. So she's got a handful of eager scientists, and she's out there, uh, yeah, methodically taking the samples off the vehicle disappearing into the laboratory for long hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually uh, surprised. Last night's processing went pretty quick. Um, for update for our viewers, we uh, actually did find a shark tooth in the, the nodules that we scooped. So that was pretty exciting to find. Well, it's interesting because shark's teeth are often the uh, nucleus yeah. of what nodules form around. Yeah, yeah. Was it a was it a fossilized shark tooth? I don't know. It yeah, it didn't seem super covered in any no. manganese or anything, but it, it was a black color. But but you know, it's huh. typically what you see when you find now I shark teeth. I what should say that John Culberson took the picture of it and he put it into Google Images oh. to see what it would match. Oh, that's lovely. And it wasn't a perfect match, but. Google Images suggested that it might be the stinger of a stingray. Ah, okay, that would make sense too, because yeah, it was very it long and be, thin. Yeah. That's and still an interesting find. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Dan, we have a question for you. If you had unlimited money to upgrade one thing on the ROV, what would it be? Hmm. Uh, the software, so the software, the <laughs> software. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazily loaded question. <laughs> I think I know who's asking that. Where is that viewer from? Canada? <laughs> Ooh, um, what is, is that a shrimp? Oh, I'm yeah, not taking that bait, kinda sorry. <laughs> funny. Uh, 
I wouldn't change a thing. This ROV is there perfect. You go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, cup holders by the pilot chair. Yeah, that would be cool. Very good. You got a also, 3D printer. We could probably have that knocked out by the la by the next dive. That's amazing that we have it. Yeah. It's a great. Yeah. Actually, what are we even doing with our lives? We should describe to everybody that we all sit in these kind of quite regular little office chairs, but the pilot does have a, a very fancy uh, chair. Yeah. Uh, you could, well, we but, just passed but, over. But, but no cup holders. Uh, we just passed over a, a predation event there. There was a sea star feeding on a bamboo coral. I totally missed it. I was oh daydreaming of upgraded ROVs. <laughs> 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 oh, oh good. You see, uh, most oh, of the polyps okay. are gone because yeah, that sea star has been nomin. So, uh, fortunately for me, because it really grosses me out, we can't get a shot of the backside. But oh, yeah. When they avert their, their stomachs or eject their stomachs yeah. out of there. And they're not yeah. very polite eaters. They eat with their mouth open. <laughs> yeah, so you see, you see where it's stripped, is moving up, just stripping the polyps off. Yeah, and it also exposes those black nodes that are characteristic oh, of the bamboo, bamboo corals. Yeah. I guess we, we, we can't interfere with the cycle of life here. I have long time viewers saying that they love seeing the evolution of Hercules. The RVs are much faster and agile now. Was that our uh, prime directive we have to hold to? <laughs> oh, to, mo to model this one? <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. No, Let's to another, not interfere uh, with the circle of zero. life. Oh. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I have Let's a hard time multitasking sometimes. I'm trying to keep the moves in so the ship doesn't have to keep stabilizing. No, yeah, yeah. please keep it moving, keep yeah. it moving, yep. keep it yep. moving. We want to keep moving, yeah. I'm sorry, I know. Uh, viewers asking if Hercules and Atalanta have ever crashed. Into each other? Um, yeah. I don't, they don't specify. You can, you, you, can, uh, you can put in a long move, too, if that will He's, help. Yeah. yeah I got Dan it. says if, you, if it helps, you can put in a long move, too. It's up to you. We're going to live dangerously, Larry. We're putting a... I don't know if you're listening metal, to the bridge metal. back I'm there. I'm not hearing the bridge, but I heard he wants to put a long move in. Uh, yeah. Chris can explain yeah. that to you. Yeah, so uh, the ship uh, kind of struggles and tries to move sideways to get back up. Like, it, it, you, we can't go east and weather vane into the current at the same right. time, right? So it's, we have to either keep moving or whatever. Yeah. So the, he's going to just keep putting in big moves to... Yeah, and I think given where we want to go and yeah. where we get to, that, that's fine. Yeah. So just keep in mind, if we do want to stop, it's going to be a little bit of a thing. No, I, I think uh, you know, it, 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 would, it would take a, a very special place to, to have a stop. Yep. Uh, yeah, and we can make it happen. It's just going to take longer than normal. Right. A viewer suggests a 360 okay. camera uh, atop go. Hercules Turn as an upgrade. Jonathan, are you online? Jonathan's sending in stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a viewer. That's coming from the data lab. <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, I think if we had a, a 360 camera on top of Hercules, or um, Hercules, you'd just see basically a bright light and then a whole lot of nothing. Wow. The probably the more apropos feature would be the on the bottom side. But the issue that you run into there is that, you know, you got to think about it getting whacked during uh, launch and recovery. And most of the time, um, because you know, depending on our altitude above the terrain or what the features look like, that's going to be the most subject to sediment getting picked up for kicked up from oh, crop true. wash. Yeah. Yeah, look at all these ripples, just so so clear. I think the thing I'd like to see is uh, INS. What's yeah. what your heading now, Dan? What's on? I'm um, due east. Due east. So it says those ripples, uh, those ripples are on the yeah, east west. Yeah, it seems to be flattening out here. You can come down a bit.
Hey, Rachel. Are you there? Yep, what's up? What do you think about zooming uh, cinema cam in just a smidge to get rid of that very annoying Norbit shadow? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, sure. I think we want that there so Jonathan remembers. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to, I've been battling with that Norbit shadow for yeah. the whole expedition. And Have we done any kind of photogrammetry, like calibrations uh, this time with the fiducial or anything? No, nope. nope. Okay. I just see how it, just see how it looks. Just maybe a touch on. Uh, I think Jonathan would love photogrammetry. These little ripples, don't you think? Oh, uh, we got viewers online there that are admiring the ripples too. <laughs> In theory, actually, I can do it. Yeah, <laughs> I was just kidding. Or you could do it. You bring up uh, two one seven. Yeah, I forgot two one seven works differently. Two one seven forward slash uh, CTRL forward slash homepage of the capital H capital P. In theory. I'm going to give you theory. a DVL reset. Roger. In theory, that should give you the uh, one, uh, zoom focus control board. i got to see if I can get the e my EKF solution piped back into NavG. Yeah. We had it in the last version, but then it got upgraded somewhere along the line. Yeah, some people call it upgrade. Yeah. I don't. NavG 3 is, is a bit better. We seem to uh, swamp it trying to put all the <laughs> overlays in it. I don't oh, know if yeah. it's the PC that's running it or what. Yeah, that could be. What the deal is there? I'm going to stay a little closer to you, Ray, just because we're going downhill. So I'm going to stay about 10 meters in front of you. So we'll run a little bit higher delta than normal and maybe that 20 meter delta. Uh, yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. Doesn't have to be exact. Turn that one, that home page. Okay. Quite the way back there, eh? 50 meters. Measure range and bearing button gives you delta x and delta y. Range and delta x and delta y. I thought for I was excited for a second. I thought. Mm. Not that there's a button here that says measure range and bearing. Yeah, that gives you range and bearing, doesn't it? Nope. Oh no, there's bearing. Okay, it, it yeah. does. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, that's useful. It is useful. Yeah. It? Yeah. Delta x and delta y is not super useful. Not on uh, a 2D map, no. No, <laughs> I don't quite get it. Yeah. What do I miss it? Uh, just as a heads up, it looks like I'm having some issues getting into the zoom controller for the cinema cam. Okay. Um, but what I can do is I can crop it out on the top side display. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Okay. OBS it. Um, Manal, could you take uh, the Triclops top side off air for a little bit? Yeah, copy that. Give me a sec. In fact, could I actually get like a camera directly on me so the world can watch me fumble <laughs> my way through this <laughs> procedure? Yeah, totally. <laughs> we got our um, viewers saying. Hold, hold on a sec, Rachel, before you do that. Let me try something here. Oh, do you, do you, well, if you, do if you, you iris buttons. down a little, how's that look? Uh, hang on a second. If I run with the down lights, we've tilted them forward so they're not. Yeah, but the but the issue the now the so the port side the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah the port side's pretty Sorry. blown out with the down lights. Roger. Um. I just need to get over it and tilt it up a little. I think I can't. Uh, I could get rid of that shadow, but I'd have to hang the light out a little bit further. No, than I'm I can. Uh, I can. I can just crop out the cinema. Uh, the camera. The shadow ones on the top side view of CinemaCam. 